Hi there, this is Lisa Starr from Win Business. I'd like to thank Christy and her team at Spa Buzz for putting this virtual get together together for us today. I'd like to say I'm coming to you from a alternate reality, but the fact is it's our reality, strange as it might be. You know, I read a science fiction book last year where something like this happened, uh, you know, a global incident where people were impacted and it was much worse than this reality, but this reality is pretty bad. Uh, a month ago, even two weeks ago, none of us would have predicted that we would be where we are. So it's really time to take stock and think about, okay, what do we do with the situation we're in and how do we move forward? And so I wanted to take a few minutes and speak to you from my perspective about that. I've been in the industry for a long time. Um, I remember when 9-11 happened and business shut down overnight, really came back in about six weeks uh, where we started to feel normal again. We had SARS in the early aughts, didn't have as big of impact here in the US. And then of course the recession in 2008 and nine had a massive impact and really shifted, you know, a, a forward momentum. Many businesses closed, people found other work, you know, there was sort of a resettling of things. And of course, in January of this year, things were booming along. Our projections were great. The economy was buzzing. And it just goes to show you that you, you can't look that far ahead. Things change that are not within our control. What is within our control is how we respond and how we move forward with our businesses. And in and, and that note, I wanted to just walk through a few scenarios with you. Here, I'm going to focus on these four areas, finances, leadership, marketing, and looking ahead. I won't take too long because I know you have lots of good people to listen to and other things to do. So starting with finance is obviously the most important thing because cash is king. And you realized in the last few weeks just how true that was. Hopefully you have at this point, um, if you're closed, certainly laid off or furloughed most of your employees, if not all, you have put a stop to any uh, recurring expenses that you have show up for deliveries or services that you're not using at the moment. You know, everything you can do to sort of tighten down and pay only what you have to during this time. Labor for most of us is the, you know, the single biggest expense that we have. So without that, that's a, uh, that's a help, but there are still other bills that you can try to minimize. Um, I'm jumping ahead to the loans uh, bullet, resources and loans uh, becoming available. The SBA program went into effect last Friday. Although only three billion was given out, it's a drop in the bucket to what will be available because many banks were not ready. Uh, they hadn't really been told how to handle it. There was a lot of confusion. So hopefully starting tomorrow, more banks will be able to accept those applications. You can go to sba.gov to the website and see all of the guidelines for the different packages and what's required. Um, you actually apply through your bank and your bank website will have that link where you apply. Do yourself a favor if you're planning on applying and go ahead and look at what will need to be in place because you'll have to get figures and facts together and have everything in place to make the loan application. Certainly going forward, you want to look like a business owner who is uh, able to do that, you know, has a good sense of your finances and your plans and has your I's dotted and your T's crossed because that will make your bank very happy and much more willing to work with you at this crazy time. The second biggest expense that most of us have would be um, rent or your mortgage if you've got one. If you have a mortgage and you're fortunate enough to own your building, um, that will be a different kind of loan or working with your lender on some relief from that aspect. Most of us are in lease situations and uh, there are several things you can do to try to mitigate that expense. One would be to have uh, approach your landlord and ask for deferred rent. Um, maybe you make it up later this year or in little bits over a certain amount of time. If you can get one or two rent free months right now, obviously that would be really helpful. Um, Short-term relief, maybe they'll forgive a month or two if they're in the position of being able to get something uh, on their end. So it's worth asking. A third option called Blend and Extend allows you to pay your rent later and extend the term of your 
original lease end date. So let's say your lease is scheduled to end in November of 2023, and you get two months where you don't pay now, then your lease would end in January of 2024. So your uh, landlord still gets their money, but they get it a little bit later. Um, a fourth option would be for them to uh, let you just pay your CAM and your operating expenses for the month and forego any other rent. So these are all conversations to raise with the landlord and say, you know, what can you do? What can you help me with? Um, they may say nothing. I mean, they're under no obligation to do so, but everyone is in this position and hopefully you will reach some understanding or have some degree of helpfulness from them on, on that conservation of that money. Um, clearly, as I mentioned, we went into January so busy and numbers were great. We had rosy predictions that are not going to come to pass now. So you'll want to pull back and reevaluate your projections for the rest of the year, given not just closed time, but once we're open again, it won't be business as usual. It won't be busy, certainly not right away. So uh, we're going to have to adjust what we think will happen to this new reality. It's a guessing game. I grant you that. No one knows. It's, it's really difficult to sort of say what will happen next week because the news changes every day. But we know that businesses will open again in the shorter term. It's not going to be a year or two. It will be weeks, if not a month and a half from now that we're back up and running. Praise, I cross my fingers. But um, we will not come back to the strength that we were. That certainly is true. So we need to think about that. Moving on to the leadership uh, component of what you do. I mean, this is the time when your staff and your clients really need to see you. It's easy to be a good leader when things are good. This is when we're really tested. There's so much uncertainty and nervousness and anxiety, especially around your staff. And you have furloughed or laid them off, but you don't want to lose touch. I would be make many efforts to stay in regular contact, at least sending a weekly note out. Whether you do that through WhatsApp groups or a closed Facebook group or perhaps Google Hangouts or you know some method. Your um, corporate email may be disabled if they're if they are on layoff, but uh, find a way that you can connect and let people know what you're doing. You know, here's what we did. This week I applied for the loan. I, you know, we cleaned the whole place. We've rewritten our protocols. We, you know, keep in touch with what the plans are so they feel that sense of community, you know, that their team uh, is still there and together. No doubt you're receiving dozens of emails as I am from all the businesses that we do business with that are letting us know their status. Are they open, closed, partial? And if they're open, such as the grocery store, what the sort of rules of engagement are for coming in and using them. Most spas are closed. Um, there's no partial for us. We're not essential, but uh, I would certainly be communicating that you hope to be up and running soon and what you're doing in your downtime, um, which I'll get to in a moment. Business relationships, your vendors, your business partners, your people that you uh, collaborate with, do reach out and, and chat with them. I'm finding myself having many nice chats, Zoom meetings, phone calls with people that I haven't had the time to do in a long time. So it is a time for connecting. And I think everyone is, is hungry for that, just to see other faces, whether it's on a Zoom call or a Facebook call, or to communicate in some way, have virtual chats. Um, do reach out and, and let people know how you're doing. Important really for you to remain calm. I know I say that it's not always easy, but this is a true test of leadership skills and you need to be centered and strong for your team and you'll need to do what whatever that takes for you to reach that whether it's uh, continuing to watch your diet, keeping up your exercise habits, getting enough sleep, making sure there's some you time in the day. Um, which is difficult when you're laying in bed at night, I know, worrying about what will happen, but you're no good to your team when you're exhausted and mindfulness is never more important than now. So please try, if you're able to walk outside once a day to do that and just make sure you can be uh, who you need to be in the moment, um, that, that your personal wellness is being addressed so you can be strong going forward. 
because there will be a forward. We're going to reopen. What it will look like may be somewhat different. Um, I've talked already about the cleanliness and sanitation need. Now, we know in the spa industry that guests come into our spaces, they disrobe and down to nudity, and they go in rooms with strange people, and they're used to that. That's a norm, and there's never really been any issue. Of course, we have good hygiene and cleanliness standards, but we've never also promoted that so much. And I think you're going to see a lot of, you know, front and center, here's how we clean, here's our protocols around that or our, our standards around that. Um, we need to make it very clear. So once you're reopening, you'll want to tell guests through eBlast or on your website, here's what we've done while you were away. We cleaned from top to bottom. You know, we've redone our protocols. We're using new products. We're aware of the C CDC guidelines. Um, whatever it is you need to do to communicate to them that you're clean and healthy. I have had some conversations with other spa professionals who think that uh, masks are going to become part of the uniform going forward. And who knows, we may be doing facials with masks and gloves uh, for a few months, if not forever. So I'd be prepared for that. Um, I don't think scary looking surgical masks are in order, but some kind of fashionable, cute way to cover the mouth and nose when a therapist is going to be especially close to the guests. I think you need to be prepared for that and have something ready so that your team looks great when the guests do come back. It's likely that you are not, maybe have lost some staff. They've moved home or gone on to other things and, and you may want to think about how your schedule will look when you reopen. If you were a seven day a week operation, I, I don't think you're gonna need to reopen seven days the day we get the go ahead. I, I'd be thinking about a five day a week schedule at least for the first couple of weeks. Compress your hours, maybe not so many late nights. Just let's try and compress our assets into less time until we get the kinks ironed out and we're up and running smoothly. Uh, don't try to do what you were doing before. Adjust the staff and the hours as as makes sense for your business. On the menu note, I think that we're going to need to be a little bit creative here. Uh, what can we offer that's new and different? Perhaps shorter, perhaps less invasive services, maybe lower price points. Let's get the guests really comfortable with coming back to the spa. You see, I have on the slide a picture of someone in a virtual reality headset. Maybe there are some things we could do where the guests can experience stress relief and mindfulness that don't involve a therapist. Maybe they sit in a special chair or a pod or we do a meditation program with them or we, maybe they get hand treatments. I mean, it's not all back to what we did is what I'm saying. I think some shorter, less expensive and less invasive options on the menu would be good. And on that note, you can use this time to look at the menu and really say, wait, what? What aren't we selling? You know, what, what do we need to get rid of and bring on and, and make other uh, adjustments to price and offering as you may while you're closed? If you do develop a few new treatments, of course, you'll want to have the steps required, the products and the protocols in place before you open. I'm sure your resource uh, partners would be happy to hear from you if you have plans and if they're open and able to ship, they'd certainly be happy to get some product to you. Best time for social media is now. I mean, where would we be without it? Honestly, I, I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook personally, but I have in the last week or two especially, and I'm just stunned by how clever people are being, how funny, how engaging, um, the games they're playing, the, the, the level of engagement is just great. And make sure that you're in that, that you're participating in some way. Um, We've seen a lot of that yoga has done in its ability to use platforms to come and deliver even live services, yoga and fitness to our living rooms. Um, we can't really do the same in spa, but we can do demonstrations or chats. I've seen a lot of Instagram live, five, 10 minutes, something fun and engaging. You could do a Facebook live program. You can record things. Um, Certainly send emails, continue to post, do not stop, stay in front of your guests. This, as I said, it's more important, more important now than it ever was. So where do we go from here? You know, looking ahead, um, I mentioned making use of the downtime. You may not have access to your space or you may not be able to bring a team 
in with you because of social distancing, but at least one or two of you should be able to go in and really do that deep clean of every surface. And using lean principles, how can you adjust the business going forward? There's a business guru named Paul Akers who has um, talks about lean in this series of the three S's he calls it sweep, sort, and standardize. So going in and cleaning, you know, I'm, we're all doing that at home, right? Everyone's cleaning out their closets and their bookcases and the places you've never gotten to. You need to do that at your place of business too. And then um, sorting it and then getting rid of what you don't need and standardizing what you do. This is a great time for that. It's also a great time personally for you to think about what what classes could you take advantage of? I have enrolled in two free online courses that I would normally not have done because I didn't have time, but I have some time now. And um, there's a lot there, classcentral.com. Go there, you'll see Ivy League courses, hundreds and hundreds of courses about history or art or anything that you might want to learn about that's not necessarily business related. It's good, good for your brain. Um, Lean principles I've addressed, flexibility going forward for sure. We don't know what business will be like when we come back. We know it will be different. And I just want you to think about that. It's not going to be what it was. It will be something different and we need to be prepared for what that is. Don't put a lot of energy into how to make it the same as it was. How can we make it better than it was? How can we use this as an opportunity to come out stronger on the other side? There is a business, uh, speaker named Margaret Heffernan that I listen to. She's a professor and gives TED Talks. And she talks about how we can't plan for an event like this, but we can prepare. And now you have the uh, sort of ability to look back and say, boy, two weeks ago, if I had known this was coming, what would I have done or what would I have had in place? And just write that down. Don't forget it, because this is not the last time. We're going to have epidemics and pandemics and global catastrophes. We're a connected world now. What happens in one place happens everywhere. We've seen how quickly. So hopefully we have another 10 or 20 years until we have another global event, but let's be more ready the next time. Let's be prepared. Um, just don't think about how you can stay the same. Think about how you can be even better. So here is uh, my email address and my social uh, places. Please visit me there. I would love to hear from you if you're having challenges. Uh, if you have a question, I'm happy to reach out. I have lots of time on my hands. I'm happy to do that. And I wish uh, the best of luck to everyone going forward. I can't wait to see you in person someplace, somewhere soon. Thank you.